Hello everyone, I'm Yossi Palmashi and I wrote a VR server. That's uh, ever, since, ever since Zuckerberg sold, uh, I mean changed his company name to Meta, this goes by the, by the name of Metaverse. So, you know, that's what we call these things like today. So what am I, what am I doing on, on finance conference? Well, spoiler alert, no spoilers. We'll get to it. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll try to, to do this presentation in three chapters, every, every one of them in uh, why, what, and how manner. And uh, why would I do a open source VR server in the first place? Well, because finances are boring, right? I mean, I know you can't admit that in front of your bosses, but, uh, but we'll, we've all been there, right? I mean, if you were interested in finances in the first place, we'd study economy or something, right? Not software engineering. And uh, I've been science fiction and open source fa fan for a long time. like. And to me, these science fiction books read like, like a project handbook in many places so there's no you can see that they write there's no collisions on the street this is you know direct optimization technique to save your cpu power or there's no shadows on the street again you know too easy to make rendering easier so you know when i read it i thought to myself yeah i can do it you know and i and started writing it it was somewhere Somewhere 20 and three years ago, I guess. Three. Yeah, it was last century, you know, when I started writing it. It was, uh, it was very, very long time ago, way ahead of, of, way before it made sense. From that round of uh, VR attempts, only, only Second, Second Life made it. All the other companies, including mine, failed miserably. Specifically, I failed, I failed to find funding. And the project went on hold for quite a while. Now that, now that again, Zuckerberg is spending like 10 billion a year to make it happen, now it, it does make sense. But more importantly, best thing that's happening right now in terms of VR, and especially VR-enabled internet, is not uh, Facebook changing, ga changing name to Meta or whatever, but the way I see it, it's uh, final and permanent death of uh, Internet Explorer. Think of it. How many times have we heard, uh, this does not work in Explorer, that does not work in Explorer, right? It's WebSockets, it's uh, WebRTC, whatever you wanted it, it never worked in Explorer, like, right? So now that Explorer is finally dead, dead uh, everything just works. And we can make plenty of uh, good things. You know, WebGL works, WebSockets work, WebRTC works. It just works and you can use it uh, only with uh, open source libraries that utilize open source standards, right? And I... Uh, so, what else is there? I mean, why? Why, uh, why this? What's my motivation to continue now? Because you see, Facebook, Google, uh, well, everybody who is anybody fights for data. Fights for data to collect as many of your data as they can to learn their, to teach their AIs on your data, right? And they, well, to do whatever. I'm not saying this is good or bad or anything, but this is, I mean, ownership of data is important and we should have some choices here, right? Says the guy who has a Facebook Messenger, Viber, uh, Telegram, uh, you know, and everything else on his mobile phone. And all they have application, uh, have complete permissions to access anything that I have on my, on my cell phone. So, yeah, uh, VR devices, VR devices 
measure your movement. When you put it on, they transmit your height straight to the, well, to the owner, to the whoever you connect to. And they, so that's when you put it on. All your movements, all your movements go somewhere. This is huge amount of data that opens up possibilities for unseen yet abuses, right? Deep fakes like, you know, unseen really. Uh, we could mimic real you just by digging through your data. You know, what have you transmitted? So, and you know, well, enough about my motivation. I'm, I'm here to really, I came back to show the, I think, proper way, proper way to do it. And it's, it's hard, it's hard, you know, there's a plenty of asynchronous processing, concurrent, concurrent programming that needs to be done that is nearly impossible to debug. Once you put a breakpoint, it never happens, you know. Uh, web developers don't, that's not what they do usually. So I simply made a, made a library for them to use it to make their life easier, to make cool, cool, uh, cool websites. In the right corner, uh, it's me in my hairy days with another hairy guy. I believe you do recognize it. This is, you know, how I discovered open source. And on the, on the left corner, this is my discussion, discussion with an AI character back in 2004, I think. This is Alice, you know, chatbot. Uh, in, in, you know which browser this is? This is the one that died, finally. You know. So, what, what do we do? How do we, I mean, what we need to do to make it happen. 3D VR enabled internet. Oh, I need to stick with microphone. I use, <laughs> all right. Uh, VR and AR are available on the web, in the web browser that, that works uh, out of the box on mobile phones, PCs, and VR devices. This goes by the name of uh, WebXR specification that is uh, developed by, I think Google is pushing for it mostly. Mozilla is lacking behind. They are on a previous iteration that is uh, called WebVR. I'm not sure if they gave up. It would be, I would be very sad if they do, you know. But it just works in browser. So to make it happen, we, know we need a lot of 3D characters, and I downloaded like 50, uh, well, no, 109, 109, and made a, made a move, just like I do. So this is called inverse kinematics and uh, motion tracking. I downloaded a bu bunch of 3D models, and I, I like open spaces, I did it all during Corona crisis, during lockdown. Uh, it was it was worse than, worse than, or so they say. It was worse than prison. Even prisoners have even prisoners have one day outside, one 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 hour outside every day, right? And we were in lockdown like three weeks. Personally, it was madness, really. Uh, and this really did help me to get over it. I didn't stop there, you know. Uh, so, what I'm going, where I'm going to with, with my project is a self-hosted solution. Like, I think VR server is like web server. There should be no, no difference. You can run Apache or anything else you want, right, for your website. You can do, you can rent it somewhere. You can run it yourself, install your... This is just a different type of content, really. This is 3D content, specifically GLTF, open source standard, uh, that can be read and written by everything that is out there. 
every every 3D tool can read and write GLTF uh, GLTF uh, files. Cross platform. Well, cross cross platform on on both client and and server side. As I said, you can view it in uh, and access it in in mobile phones or whatever tablets. You know. PCs, VR devices, but also on the server side, right? Uh, I don't want to constrain you to, you know, Linux, <laughs> right? Or maybe even uh, uh, Red Hat Linux or, you know, uh, Debian or something like that. So anything should do. Uh, we have to have 3D streaming, so when another person enters the room, their avatar loads in the runtime, right? This is 3D streaming. Uh, video audio streaming, so we can chat in the, like in real, real reality, we can chat just using our voices. Um, and as I mentioned, motion tracking, inverse kinematics to follow our movements. And we need orchestration. Now, what kind of orchestration? It's easier to explain in how section. So two green boxes here are the server and the browser. And this server does the this kind of orchestration that I, I have just mentioned. So when another person enters the room, 3D room, 3D space, we need to add that person to existing chat room provided here by a streaming server. So that kind of orchestration. We can create chat rooms on demand, uh, that kind of stuff. So uh, in that box, along with VR, VR server, we have a, this is what I actually run on my, my server on VRSpace.org. This is a, uh, demo or whatever it currently is in GitHub repository. So it may be broken. Yeah, I do that sometimes. But it mostly works. And this is what it, what it runs. Uh, most of the things here I have already mentioned. Open standards, you know, JSON, GLTF, uh, and how we communicate with them. Uh, browser downloads content either from the VR server or from the content provider. There are plenty of providers that uh, offer 3D avatars. You can take your picture and build your avatar uh, based on how you look. Uh, most important one is Sketchfab. Sketchfab is a, think of it like a web shop for 3D models, but they, they also provide, by the way, by the way, they provide 500,000 free 3D models published under different uh, Creative Commons license. 500,000 models. Do we really need anything else to build a, you know, metaverse? I mean, why not? But 500,000 model is plenty, you know? And they, of course, we need chatbots. So far, we have only uh, bot Libre integration because, I mean, I'm not aware of any other open source chatbots out there, you know. And they, you log in with whatever, you know, GitHub, Facebook, and so on. This is a overlay of, of the current state of the project. What, why would anyone want to use it? This is actually why people use it. Virtual parties, again, Corona times, you know. Corona times. I had my first virtual party last year around April, I think. Uh, usually 60 or 70 people come, you know, we party, we, you know, have good times and they, and recharge. Around uh, later that year, some other guys just dropped in, downloaded software, and made their own concert. In uh, this is in Bratislava, 
some next next festival. I really have no idea what it is because all the resources there's nothing on English. They just made their their own you know 3D space with their characters and whatnot. NFT sales. I didn't know that, but uh, I mean till the guy came and told me about it. Uh, Asia was hit much worse than uh, than Europe with Corona crisis. Like uh, Bali lost 85 percent of their income. Go figure, 85 percent, and they depend on on tourism. So what do they do? They sell NFTs of what they use, usually sell uh, time sharing in luxury apartments. Sell NFTs to keep just to keep any kind of income going, going uh, you can resell these NFTs eventually for more money, you know, things like that. And really, why do they need VR space here? Well, there is a AI chatbot that will explain you what they do, uh, how they do it, and uh, where to buy their NFTs, you know. So then there is a Indian startup that makes these AI characters for 3D spaces, you know, and sell them as service. Or company product promotion. Just company and product pro promotion. These, all the models that you can see here are available out of the box on Sketchfab. I made a simple search that really calls their API and displays, displays these models. Uh, other than that, I've been approached with a usual education, you know, this is a ideal thing really to, to get students interested in 3D in, or just, just to collaborate, to collaborate in, uh, you have, I suppose we have all been on large Zoom meetings, they can get messy. Uh, you don't know who's talking, you don't know who is who, you know, things like that. So in 3D, this is more natural. It's just uh, like we sit around a table, very quickly you get the idea who's on your light, right, who's on your left, and spatial sound improves the overall experience. Assuming, of course, you still can share, you still can text chat and whatever, you know, you do. Uh, one thing that... I'm sad I can't help with and I get uh, you know uh, queries very very often are virtual therapies so father of autistic child wants to train his child to cross the street so this is super simple game you know just a 3d street model of car here and there crosses the street, you know, and they need to cross over. I'm not, this is not something that developer can do, nor, you know, not even the therapist. You have to have child therapist that is into virtual therapy. So to, to, to be able to, to help, help, help in these cases, you know. But obviously, and this is very, very technically very simple, very simple multi-user scenario to implement. And that's why, I mean, this is, these are all, all, all uh, specific cases of people who came back to me. I see some stars, I see some forks, so people use it. I only know this uh, about these who explicitly came and asked me about, you know, and told me what they do. So what they do? So they, they choose their avatar, uh, they click on the gate to enter, you know. Um, you may or may not type, type your name. You click on the green button to, this is website. And if you click on the green button, you get text. It just scrolls down, you know. And click on the goggles to enter VR mode. And there is a, and that's like all. Everything is uh, documented up there. You can go to Wiki, you can go to GitHub, you know, whatever. Or read, read, uh, read, uh, read the documentation online. And really, how they proceed then? Well, open standards make parts interchangeable. 
you don't want this chatbot, you want your own chatbot, just replace it. Things like that, you know. Typically, first thing they get want to <laughs> they want to get rid of and replace is logo. You know, I don't mind. I don't mind, that's fine, quite the opposite. I've allowed that to be super simple, you know. Uh, then they need to run their server. It's a, I believe it's straightforward for any developer because it's well documented. But if they don't want, they don't know how, or they just, you know, want to play with HTML, I have made this VRSpace.org server open to public. No questions asked, no, no cookies, no nothing. Just, you know, come and play with it. Uh, and the same thing with the uh, web sockets. Web sockets are also open, you know. You can download everything and just develop, you know. So then what, the, what do people do? They customize authentication, of course. Uh, streaming software, for instance, open video that I use is not very good uh, for, for music. If you want to stream music, you will need to have some better, uh, better quality, you know, and so on. Sadly, all this customization typically never get out into open source. They are all proprietary customizations. Why? Because that's how venture capitalists do. That's what they do. They want to, if they want to invest into your startup, they have to be able to purchase every single asset that you own, you know. And that's why it never gets out. I hope I'm wrong. On the left side, this is a screenshot. Well, this is screen sharing. So I just got into this, uh, this uh, United Alpha space. Hopefully, this startup will publish everything. And they and sharing my presentation, you know, this one. So, why am I here? <laughs> I mean, on this conference. So far, this, this doesn't have anything to do with, uh, with finance. Well, well, cryptos. Cryptos are obvious answer, answers. Uh, even with 500,000 open source model, models, one thing that I have to do is credit authors. I am required to do so by, by Creative Commons licenses, which I so blatantly violated in this presentation because there are no credits. Look, sorry guys, I can't. I just can't because if I showed you authors, for all these models that you see, you see here, there wouldn't be much room left for the presentation, you know, for the text of the presentation. But I'm trying to solve it with a, what I call open source NFTs. And this is the reason why I'm here, really. I'll show you this contract. So uh, anyway, before we get there, how does all this get along, you know. First thing that people want is, I want to look like me and nobody else. When you see me in the crowd, you should be able to recognize me. So how do, you, how do I protect my avatar? Well, allegedly, NFTs are supposed to do that. Allegedly. And they, they should also provide ownership and portability and whatnot. Allegedly, because once you store, you know, this token on the blockchain, it's there, it's immutable, no one's going to tamper with it, like, right? Well, you know, first, which blockchain? Uh, okay, because, you know, you have blockchain, this blockchain, that, how many of you, of, of different technologies, you know? And then, suppose you choose Ethereum, there's like 10 Ethereum networks, they don't talk to each other, you know? So really portability is, we are, we are pretty far from there. And especially if we get to identity, identity on the blockchain, this is, uh, I, I don't even know where to start, you know, I've seen 
I can't say how many of these competing technologies, even open source projects, you know, that, that uh, I, I honestly don't know where to start. Last but not least, investment. Uh, crypto tokens are much easier to deal with than traditional bonds, shares, whatever. And investors love it. Investors love it. Uh, they get response next day or maybe even the same day. How, how the sale goes. With traditional uh, uh, financial securities, it takes six days to get any kind of response. You know? And that's why investors love it. The other thing is that uh, it's completely irre... There's no regulations of any kind. I mean, if you play it well, you make sure you have to make sure that this is not uh, that this is not bond, that this is not share, that this is. And what 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 do all these startups do? They sell virtual, you know, like this token represents uh, one square meter in our virtual world. So this is digital asset like any other and has nothing to do with any kind of financial securities. And that's why, why we have explosion of, of these, uh, these uh, uh, virtual worlds that sell, you know, virtual assets. This is how they, they collect investment. What happens then, you know? So, so we have, you know, like N organizations that uh, all their each and every one of them can run a number of virtual spaces inside one server. They, they, can plenty, they can have plenty of their servers. On the ledger, distributed ledger, they store identities, avatars, inventory, you know, like what you can carry around, uh, how many tokens you have. This is all on the ledger somewhere in ideal world, right? Now it doesn't matter what kind of ledger that is, uh, but the point is that you, when you like cross from LinkedIn to Facebook, you have your avatar, coins and everything with you, right? Except, you know, how does that solve my question with uh, tracking authors of 500,000 uh, free models that are there, you know? Well, it doesn't. I mean, this is how I came up with uh, with uh, with smart contracts that uh, that I call open source NFT, and uh, and this is entire contract. So on the left side, this is something that I copied from who knows where. Honestly, just a cut, just just cut some pieces that I di didn't need. On the right side, this is my my uh, my uh, super original contract that consists of constructor, and below it is a boilerplate code that doesn't do anything really. I mean, it's just there to to keep the thing connected. This open source NFTs, like any other NFT, contains you know URI of model of 3D model. It is ownable, so it can, like any other uh, NFT, it is en enumerable, unlike any other NFT. So it can it can be copied around. It can be copied around along with the model. And we need a on-chain content registry on the left. So. So registry contains author information, essentially, and model information, and points to URI, URI of metadata. This is on-chain information. Off-chain, this URI contains mo uh, JSON, JSON information of uh, metadata, which contains, you know, image, URL. Well, image is actually misnomer here because we are dealing with we are dealing with 3D models, but this is NFT standard. That's what that's how they call it. 
and did the, this, uh, this image points to the actual location. So VR server, reads the registry, means NFTs, uh, writes metadata if necessary, and reads, reads metadata anytime, and delivers the content. Net result is, we have two tables. We have table on chain, table with uh, all the models, and the other table with all the authors. We can, at any time, figure out how many uses of a particular model has everywhere. You know, how many, how many times a model has been copied around. We have on-chain information, right? And we could do the same for git commits, you know? I mean, what's the, what's the essential difference? You have this hash or that hash or this ID or that ID. Are you following? I mean, I hope you do because, you know, whatever we do and and this, I mean, I hope it opens the way to get open source authors rewarded for their contributions, right? So pull the report first every month and see how many commits someone contributed, right? So. Now, now that we think of it, why don't, I'm not in the good, any, any kind of Git business myself, but why don't GitHub, GitLab, Git this and Git that already do that? Why don't they do it already? Well, if you try to pay some, someone uh, in, in Brazil or China, you will get pretty, pretty good idea why. You know, truth is <laughs> that banks don't talk to each other. And you will have to go with uh, some fintech that solves these payment issues. And th this is if you figure out a uh, bank account where the money needs to go. Uh, blockchain solves all these issues as long as you don't lo lose your wallet. Because if you lose your wallet, you lose, lose everything you, you have, you know. Specifically, my proposal here is, is this really. Let's enable open source economy somehow with blockchain along these lines. And that's why I'm here. Uh, uh, may I have the first questions? Does any of this make sense to you? Do you know? Am I seeing things? <laughs> Is this crazy idea? Does it make sense to reward to reward open source authors based on number of their contributions? Say again. At the moment, no, most of the code is mine. Less than less than ten, really. Less than ten. So go on. How do you propose to go about setting up this community, open source economy, blockchain? I have no idea. I have no idea. I'm techy. I'm techy. I can, I can write smart smart contract to enable it. But well, other I than. Think it's an interesting proposition. But Please go on. This is a great question, and I don't have answer. Okay. I, I really don't. Have, uh, this is really an equivalent question to how, how do you measure uh, quality of a programmer? Obviously, we're not going to measure lines, right? But I, I think, I think that over time, you know, over time, uh, someone who is contributing to Linux ten years is obviously going to have, you know, continuously is obviously going to have more contribute contributions than, than someone who is new around, you know, and so on. E even if 
newbie is pushing uh, commit three commits every day. You know? Yeah, I mean, I am actually uh, one developer that already benefiting from some of the projects. Uh, uh, to, to kind of trying to solve that. One of them is Gitcoin, uh, and actually I received uh, money from it. And interestingly, uh, some of it is based on retro, what they call retroactive funding. So instead of rewarding your action at the time now, is looking back at your past and looking, oh look, this guy did this, so okay, that he, I can, and basically what the money is given is almost from your past work, not from what they expect you to do. You know? But it's based on voluntary contribution. Uh, I don't know if you know Gitcoin at all. Or no, no. So, what happens in Gitcoin, you go through different rounds, and there is company or project that have quite enough fund and that are kind of voluntarily giving money, but then uh, it works on the basic of uh, quadratic uh, kind of voting. Basically, people vote. It's kind of voting. You, you say, okay, I like this project, I put $1. And uh, the fund, I don't know if it's paid. But basically, this fund it's based on the number of people, not the amount of money you put in. So then, uh, if there are enough people that are like your your project, then your project will get uh, part of the fund of this. Uh, so it multiplies the uh, the amount you receive based on how many people you kind of uh, you attract. So I think I so I think I get it. This is what you are doing, but with real money. Not with uh, with blockchain and, and it's blockchain. I mean, it's, it's goes through this transaction and it's all all the functionality is uh, crypto money. So it's like ah, I see. Or die or... uh, you were you were about to ask something also. Yes, uh, I've done a very much of analysis. So I know the problems with the blockchain. I think there is value in creating a programmatic model of attribution. It's a little bit of a problem. All those models and then recognize all those people. The programmatic way to do that is Thank you. So, so does this actually enable that? Did you write that in the code, or how do you produce this last feature? Uh, I'm only this. So far, I'm only displaying attribution in JavaScript console after a model loads. You know, I mean, there needs to be some UI. Uh, all this, uh, all this is only proof of concept uh, that I uh, made specifically for this conference. You know, specifically for this conference, I'll ask my contributors, guys, does that make sense to you? And does this conference sound like something that we should ask? <laughs> you know about it. And they said yes, and here I am. Yeah. Uh, I mean, honestly, I need reality check here. Should we waste time on this, you know? Or does it make sense? To me, I, I, I'm not sure I understood, but I think going on, I don't think we need to go on chain, like, uh, because you, you, people need to use your system for it to work. As if I understood correctly, they keep paying on the idea that. Uh, people will make a call, will increase the count, and then you can use that data maybe to reward. But what what makes the need to make this count increase? To me, it feels uh, unless there is an incentive to do that, who is going to pay the gas for uh, performing that action? So I would have taken a different approach, I think, more like, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't think, it, uh, I'm not sure it's solvable actually, so I don't know how I would like anything to do that. Maybe one way I would imagine is more like trying to convince this author to actually mean this NFT in the first place. And then then they maybe get royalties or other methods. Well, something like that, you know. Uh, again, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about my intentions. I, I was trying to solve one problem and came across possible other kind of applications, right? The, I implemented this with Hyperledger BESU, which allows uh, no guest networks. I don't really intend to build my own network just for this, right? So I'm asking, I'm honestly asking for opinions and, and inputs, you know. 
here, whatever you can you can help me with. You know, and I appreciate I appreciate your 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 opinions and, and inputs. Uh, uh, why why blockchain in the first place? Because anybody can download software without ever asking me anything, you know. And of course, that's the point. Each uh, of their users can download some of all of these 500,000 free models from who knows where, you know, and they never attribute original author. <laughs> so that's why I thought, you know, that that uh, that blockchain could be solution for for these these issues. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. That too. Because that, they are legally allowed to do that. Yeah, yeah, that too. That too. We are we are facing a huge amount of, I mean, ridiculous. It's free. How can you steal it? Well, <laughs> you know, but you can. All that you need to do is fake uh, credits, and a. Uh, all right. Uh, okay, thank you for your attention and for your your uh, your input, for your uh, and any questions or, or or you know anything else, please reach out. Okay.